The Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, has underscored the need for Ghana to bring to the fore the contributions of the various protagonists who played key roles to steer the country to independence. Speaking at the first lecture of Ghana at 60 years on anniversary in Accra, Professor Michael Quay said gallant men such as John Mensah, Saba, Jacob Wilson, C, J.P. Brown, George Alfred Gantz, Dr. J.B. Dankwa, Edward Ekufado, R.S. Blay, John Toby, Kabna Kesi, Dr. Ebenezer Akwenje, who conceived the idea of the nation Ghana on 4th August 1947, must equally be properly uh, be given their proper recognition for their roles. Or was signed to mark the start of the Gold Coast colony. 53 years later, the Aborigines Right Protection Society was formed to mark the start of the struggle for political independence. This was led by John Mensah Saba, Joseph Kisley Hayford, JWC, JP Brown, and, and others among who organized the chiefs and the people against the Crown Lands Bill and forced the colonial authorities to retreat. The next significant event in the struggle for independence took place in Salt Pond on 4th August 1947, exactly 50 years after the formation of the Aborigines' Right Protection to form the first political movement in the British colony, the United Gold Coast Convention, UGCC. The focus of the 21-member group led by Dr. J.B. Dankwa, J.P. Brown, George Alfred Grant, Edward Akufuado, R.S. Blay, John Toby, Kwabena Kesi, Dr. Benizar Kweje, and others was simple to demand for independence from the Queen of England. Delivering the first lecture of Ghana's 60 years on anniversary christened 4th August, Ghana's Day of Destiny, the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, said the day marks the birth of the nation Ghana. Setting fundamentals of independence had been declared in Sorbonne in 1947 before Nkrumah arrived in this country. What will be the name of the independent country to be? That name was researched upon and produced by J.B. Dangwa. They knew we would need a flag, naturally. What will be the flag? Red, yellow, green, which we have to see. They had conceptualized, formulated, and put all these things down for posterity. What will be the emblem of the nation? They chose the eagle. And Dankwa justified and explained in the stencil the eagle for Ghanaians. It should interest the Ghanaians to know that these things had been established written in the various newspapers and no one person could have changed it at that stage of our development towards independence. Professor Kwe, who veered into the controversial issue of whether Ghana has a founder of founders, said the role of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah cannot be downplayed, but he is not the founder of the country. The picture behind me, the reason why Kwame Nkrumah later to become part of the big sick is not present there is that at that time he was in the United Kingdom. Those who met to fashion out independence for the Gokos did not at that time include Kwame Nkrumah, though he was to come later and add significantly to the struggle. It is for this matter that it must be understood clearly when we are looking into our history and it is imperative to echo loudly that Nkrumah was not the founder of Ghana. I consider him one of the founding fathers, something similar to Paul, who was not there when Christ gave the Last Supper. Professor Marco Kui said the country needs to revisit the tenant laid in 1947 and aim to achieve the goals set for the country. This development and revisitation of August 4th, 1947 gave Ghana a second chance to demonstrate the true spirit of our national anthem, freedom and justice, freedom from ignorance, freedom from regimentation, freedom to do and dare what we know is true and fair and right, and above all, freedom to recommit ourselves to liberal democracy, the rule of law, and human rights. 
Organizers say similar lectures will be organized to bring into perspective the historical background of Ghana's independence and various roles played by everyone.